What is going on YouTube? Levi Adams back with another drawing video for day two of the Rambutan Drawing Challenge. Um, so uh, yeah, today it is uh, draw something you like. So I decided to go with a picture um, depicting characters from my two favorite uh, animated series, one being Your Lion April. Um, absolutely easily my favorite anime slash manga um and the second being steven universe as you can see as i'm drawing steven right there um sorry this video is so long it was uh it was actually it actually took me a lot longer than i thought i did or than i thought it would <coughs> um it actually would have been significantly shorter uh except for the fact that i really just do not like the pose I'm drawing Steven in right now um so yeah uh I guess talking about about this um about this show about these two shows I I don't even know where to begin um I discovered Your Lie in April uh one day when I was working on a comic for a competition um, and I was just kind of looking for an anime to watch, uh, to get me into the mood to draw, um, to give me like a little bit of inspiration. And so I found Your Lie in April on Netflix and I saw that it had an English dub and the little title card was so, uh, was so beautiful. Like the way it looked was, was amazing. The colors really captured me and that is honestly like the biggest reasoning behind uh, behind why I love it so much um, is the visuals uh, and the story it tells. Well, I mean, like, like that's part of the. Uh, anytime I show somebody this series, I'm, I'm just like, look at the colors, look at the colors, and they're like, yeah, Levi's cool. Um, <laughs> but uh, if I had to suggest any anime series. Um, I think that I I would definitely suggest this one, and I'm I'm probably actually going to make a an entirely separate video um, drawing uh, the two main characters, Kaori and Kose, or even even all of them, because the supporting cast is also just incredibly wonderful. Um, I have mixed feelings about Tsubaki, but that's something for another video. Uh, three things that I always keep with me at all times are uh, Volume One of Your Lie in April. Uh, volume 1 of Katekyo Hitman Reborn and the uh, Katekyo Hitman are Volume 1 of Mizukoi uh, and Volume 1 of Katekyo Hitman Reborn because those are my three favorite uh, three favorite manga um, and it's it's very interesting because when I got into uh, manga and anime it was uh, it was mainly due to Dragon Ball Z and I really enjoyed the fighting I really enjoyed the action I really loved Akira, Akira Toriyama's style. Um, I, yeah, what can I say? I, I loved the idea of like just getting really strong and punching people. Um, but then, uh, as I grew older, that definitely started to change. Um, I started looking into other series. Um, at first, I was looking at other series. Like uh, I was really into Dragon Ball Z, and then I got really into Fairy Tail. I love Fairy Tail. I don't care what anybody says. Apparently, like, people don't like Fairy Tail, and I don't understand it. Like, why is Fairy Tail? Like, sure, the plot can get a little predictable sometimes, but I don't know. The Fairy Tail is just too good. Like, I don't care if it's predictable, I just care that it's entertaining, and that's, like, the most important thing about it. Um, and, uh, it's just, I really, uh, <laughs> um, like, as I continued, to read and watch things, I think it was actually um, Nisekoi was my first uh, was my first manga I started to watch, uh, or my first manga I started to read, uh, the first anime I started to watch that wasn't very action heavy. Um, of course, there I'm sure there were some other ones. Um, my ex-girlfriend and showed me like a bunch of them. Uh, like Detective Conan isn't very action-heavy, but it's a you know it's like a mystery uh, drama type thing. And don't get me wrong, I I really love action and 
Um, but I think that the story that Your Lion April tells is so, like, it hits so close to home um, for me personally uh, that that is why I love it so much. Um, any, like, to anybody who's wondering, uh, Your Lion April is about a young man named Kosei Arima. Uh, Arima Kosei, whichever one you want to like pronounce it as. Uh, if you're a weeb like me, um, then it's Arima Kosei. Um, and uh, he was a child prodigy at the piano. And he played the piano because his mother forced him to. Um, and uh, basically, and his mom was very abusive when it came to the piano uh, and when it came to raising Kosei. Uh, and this left scars on Kosei, like, immensely. Um, his mom kept on, his mom was terminally ill. And his mom kept on saying that if you play well, then I'm going to get better. And, uh, and one day, Kosei, uh, Kosei's mother dies. And, uh, like, this follows two years after that day. Um, and I would say that this is spoilers, but it's, like, within the first few minutes of the episode. Or, of the first episode, so. Uh, then, um, fast forward a little bit to, you meet Kosei, Kosei's friends, Watari, and uh um and Tsubaki and uh the two like you see this friend dynamic and I've never seen something so natural uh and this is something that definitely comes through during the English dub uh especially I watch both the Japanese and the English dub I prefer the English dub uh just because then I don't have to pay attention to subtitles and they sing twinkle twinkle little star at certain points and it's much cuter in English uh, but that's just that's just a personal thing for me, um, and uh, and you see their dynamic, and that is something that is way too real. Uh, you hear all the time about characters being like, "Oh, my Nakama," um, and but you don't actually get a sense that they're friends. Uh, you don't feel like you don't understand why they're friends. You just, uh, for example, in Fairy Tale, Gray and Natsu are kind of friends. Like they start out hating each other, or they, it's more like a rivalry because they're fire and ice, and like woohoo, that's so clever. Um, but uh, uh, but you don't understand why they necessarily care for each other outside of their rivalry. Same thing with like Vegeta and Goku, um, uh, or you know, like Luffy and literally any of his crew you don't understand why luffy cares for it like i don't really think that there's a reason for luffy to care about any of the people that he cares about like yeah they have tragic backstories and stuff but it's also just kind of like hello um <laughs> why do you even care about them um like you know zoro uh like he only likes zoro because he's a good swordsman um he only likes uh like uh, Nami's a good navigator. I almost call her Navi. Um, I hate Nami so much. Um, but, uh, <laughs> that's, that's besides the point. Um, like, all these characters have tragic backstories, yeah, and it's like, Luffy just wants them on his crew because they're useful. Uh, but you don't actually understand why he cares about any of them. Um, and I think you really get a feel, uh, with these characters that they have grown up together and that they do know each other very well and that is one thing uh because i've watched i've watched this series like f three times i watched the opening episode four times uh and the third time i watched it i really noticed how they established that character dynamic uh through just dialogue they don't um they kind of just show the kids as they're or like the three characters as they're walking town uh, like through town on their way home from school and uh, they really, I, I, I don't know, it's just a beautiful relationship that you see the characters have, and I think, I personally think it's, like, one of the best buddy dynamics ever, uh, and I think that Watari is one of the best supporting characters, uh, in every single anime I've watched. Now, I haven't watched, like, an insane amount, but, uh, but Watari is, like, the ultimate wingman, and I love that about him. Um, so... Uh, keep going, and Tsubaki invites Kosei to go on a date with Watari and one of, uh, one of Tsubaki's friends. And Kosei's like, why would I do that? I don't want to be a third wheel. Um, and 
Tsubaki's like, well, I don't want to be a third wheel either, uh, but I have to introduce her to Watari. And, um, and if you come, then we can be third wheels together. So, you know, they go and, uh, and Kosei meets this girl named Kaori, uh, Kaori Miyazono. And you, throughout the entire series, you see the relationship between the two of them blossom. Um, I feel like I should mention that at this point, uh, the day after his mother died, Kosei gives up the piano uh, because he can't hear the notes anymore. He can't hear piano notes. Um, so he just gives up. Uh, and like, it's uh, Tsubaki says that he was way cooler when he played. Um, and he like wants it to be a part of his life, but he doesn't know. Uh, but he doesn't really want it because of how much pain it caused him when he was younger. Uh, and so he meets Kaori, and Kaori is a young violinist. And she, uh, she, he sees her play, and um, he she blows him away. And he's just like he's amazed that somebody can be that good, and that's uh, the way she plays is something that's amazing. Which, as somebody who did music for a little bit, um, can to like I can totally understand and empathize with that. Um, but the the music uh, music brings these two characters together uh, because Kosei accompanies for Kaori, and then Kaori gets him to get back into the piano. Um, and you really see their, their relationship blossom, as well as the character dynamics between Watari and Kosei, and, uh, and Tsubaki and Kosei, and Tsubaki and, uh, and Kaori, and Watari and Kaori too. I think those two honestly have like a kind of cute relationship, but it's nowhere near as cute as the relationship between Kosei and Kaori. Um, and... The strongest point that this series has, uh, and the reason why I love it so much and why I can relate to it so much, is because Kosei uh, has post-traumatic stress disorder. And for anybody who is wondering, I also have post-traumatic stress disorder. And it's something that I think people are like aware of in my life, but they don't, they're not really aware of it. I don't know. Um, and... Uh, the way they put, and the way Kosei is portrayed, um, he's not portrayed as crazy. He's just like portrayed as as hurt and as the same state he was when he experienced the trauma that he experienced, I guess. And this anime came into my life at like a very distinct time, um, where my PTSD was getting the better of me a lot, and it helped give me the strength to kind of move on and and like work through it the same way we see Kosei do um it's amazing every character is so real the relationships are so real and there are like a couple of tsundere moments that Kaori has uh but there's nothing that's like too in your face about it I don't like I don't really know how to describe that um it, it's just not too over the top for anybody who's seen Nizakoi. Nizakoi gets really over the top uh, with like how powerful some of it, some of the like girls are. Some of the some of the girls who like punch the main guy in the face. Um, like when a girl gets angry, uh, you know the tsundere trait of of uh, of the girl getting mad and calling the guy an idiot or a baka, and um, and then punching him, and then he like goes through a wall or something. Like there are a couple moments like that, but they're never like too extreme. It's usually just like kind of yelling or glaring, um, which I think that's something that the series does, does very well. Also, so uh, very real relationships, very real portrayal of characters, and uh, the relationships between all of the characters is something that I I enjoy immensely. Um, <laughs> and perfect because like literally the entire last half of this video is uh, is me drawing Steven. Uh, you'll see, uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, but, like, there's a, there's a point where I just completely, like, erase everything involving Steven. Um, and I just go over it again. Uh, and the video's, like, getting kind of glitchy again. That's just my recording software. So, Steven Universe. Um, Steven Universe is something I decided to watch because, uh, you'll, I mean, if you watch my videos, you know that I use Nate Wants to Battle. Uh, as like some of my music of choice pretty much 
um, especially to my like silent drawing lives uh, where I'm like not narrating like this. Um, I mean, I'm not really narrating the live right now. I'm just kind of talking, but uh, I heard Nate wants to battle's cover of Stronger Than You. And I was like, wow, that's really, really cool. Uh, maybe I should watch Steven Universe. I've heard some good things about it. So I got my wisdom teeth out like two days later. And um, and I started watching Steven Universe. And again, Steven Universe is a show that came into my life at like a very important time and had a very good message for me. Um, and I just, uh, I don't know. I really, it's something that really, really hit home. I love the music. I love the characters. Um, Steven and like... I say this all the time when people, like, when I tell them about the show, uh, they're like, oh, who's your favorite character? I'm like, oh, well, uh, sorry about that. I bumped my mic. Um, my favorite character is Garnet, uh, but I think I relate most to Amethyst or Steven um, because I think everybody's favorite character is Garnet. Like, in the community, it's pretty unanimous just because Garnet uh, signifies so many things. Um, and she has, like, some of the best lines ever. And is just that really badass female character that I've been waiting for in a series for so long. Um, and uh, Steven Universe has like the greatest combination of comedy and uh, and just like meaningful messages um, where it can be very over the top and very magical because that's basically what it is. Um, is like a magical girl series or like a magical girl anime if. Uh, if the anime were, you know, made in America, um, and, uh, but it's about, like, this little magical boy, uh, and him coming to terms with who he is, and coming to terms with, like, who he has to be, and everybody else coming to terms, uh, it really deals with subjects like loss, and, uh, um, <laughs> and, uh, unrequited love, and, um, just uh, I don't know I think Steven Steven is an as a character I empathize with uh, for similar reasons why I empathize with Kose especially in more recent episodes they really hit on Steven's uh, like the way that these journeys emotionally impact Steven and the way on uh, of how literally everything emotionally impacts Steven um, which I think is an amazing move on the creator's part and uh, and I think Steven is just one of the most rounded shows uh, in terms of characters, in terms of people that are characters that people can relate to, um, and it has a very di diverse cast and crew. Uh, I know people talk about that, but that's not even what's amazing about it. As a creator, it's just like it throws you into a world uh, with little to no information, and then once you're in that world, um, you basically have to figure everything out. Uh, along with Steven, because Steven barely knows anything about the world he's in either. Um, but that's the wonderful part about it. That's that's the beauty of it. Uh, and I think that this show really emphasizes um, how beautiful it is just to be a person and how amazing it is to just be in existence um, and how you don't have to be something amazing, how you don't... Uh, <laughs> you don't have to be quote-unquote amazing because you already are just for being, you know? Um, and that's one of the things I tell people I love about Steven Universe the most. Um, Steven Universe is an all-around amazing show. I, I can't talk about it as much as I talked about Your Lion April because I spent so much time talking about Your Lion April. Um, but these are the two shows that I love the most, and I'm really, really glad that I drew them for you, uh, that I could draw, like, this little interaction. I feel like it was somewhat accurate to how uh, how this interaction would go down um, if Steven found Kose playing the piano. Um, uh, again, I, like, wanted to redraw Steven uh, just due to the fact that um, the pose I had him in before was very static, and it wasn't very Steven. Um but yeah, that is it for me. Um, there are about two minutes left in the video. Uh, so please, if you like, I mean, if you made it this far and you like the sound of my voice, then you should probably subscribe because I'm going to be doing more videos on this. Tomorrow is going to be a video all about how much I hate Chansey. So stay tuned for that because that'll have a lot of swearing and hopefully it'll be kind of funny. I'm going to try and make the drawing kind of funny. Um, yeah. Uh, not that you should watch a video just for swearing, but it's like, 
I don't know, if you want to hear me talk about my most hated Pokemon ever, um, and probably the thing I hate most is, is Chansey, um, then yeah, subscribe, like, comment, do all those things that YouTubers ask you to do. Uh, shout outs to Amanda Lee, Lian Lai, uh, Emma Lee, whatever she's like called, I guess, uh, for this great Your Lion April medley that's been playing in the background this whole time. Um, please, please, please go watch Your Lion April and Steven Universe. I cannot talk about these shows enough. Uh, Your Lion April and well, both these shows are absolutely amazing. And um, yeah, thank you again for watching. My name is Levi Adams, and I will see you guys next time.